thing coming into this game is the fact that now that alleviates some of the pressure you get on red side, where you're forced to ban out certain champions, now only the rec side, possibly the rise ban coming in from LGD, but already some key champions of Snake being taken away, Rumble and Jin with two of those, and Sivir and Bard are the last two bans from LGD, which means Ryze is left available to be taken. Yeah, Ryze is left up, and it's taken immediately. Zir is also left up on the flip side here for Punish if they wish to go towards that, as is Lissandra. There's still champions absolutely everywhere. Karma. Summoner's Rift, yeah, Karma and Braum. But still, very surprised to see Ryze get through pick and bans. LGD completely ignoring the fact that lots of teams have been defaulting to Standard bans, Rek'Sai, Vladimir, Ryze being the main three on that red side of the map. Giving away the Ryze. They were helped out slightly by the Vladimir ban from Snake's side. Yeah, and even for a hover right now, I will say I prefer the Elise to the Graves from last time around. I mean, just look at Ryze's win weight. He's won seven out of the nine games he's seen in the LPL here. He's been banned 90% of the time. 72 games out of 81 that he's been banned. Lots of games in the LPL is what I took from that. But yes, he does have a high ban rate. Lots of games in the LPL, but he just never really sees play. Because he's just that strong of a champion. As LGD, they will lock in Karma as one of their first picks for the second time tonight. And Elise will be the jungle of choice coming into game number two. Yeah, Karma, a proven flex pick between mid and support for PYL and Punished. I want to see Punished play the one more time. The Elise change up as well is good because they're against the rise. So what okay. they've done is instead of having Graves, which is a high damage, physical damage dealer, they've said they need guaranteed crowd control to try and help. Rise's kit actually promotes him standing still and delivering all of his spells. Pretty easy to hit cocoons in situations like that. Punished if he were to play the Karma, still be relatively happy with it. Can be one of those control mages that goes for exhaust or cleanse, depending on what he needs. This pickup of Elise means that it's going to be the most played champion for Amy this split so far. One more than he has played Rek'Sai in this tournament. So he's showing that he's very comfortable in the champion. There's a couple of players here and there that like to default back to Elise for the likes of Rek'Sai oh, taken away. There's an insta-lock of Ash going to come in from LGD in response to the Graves and Braum that came out from Snake. Yeah, they were hovering. <laughs> okay. Cassiopeia is going to see play on Summoner's Rift here today. Yeah, I was going to say, we saw the uh, Ash Braum hovered by Snake, so the response from Imp apparently was that they wanted it. I'll play it. They really wanted it, so they locked that one in immediately. And Cassiopeia. This is one of the original counters to Rise, is okay. what Cassiopeia is. Doesn't mean that Rise is mid, and that's the potential fault in LGD's ways here, but that doesn't mean that Cassiopeia is mid for all I care. I believe we see Faker play that matchup quite a lot. We did. Mm -hmm. We Cassio have not really seen it since. Not since the changes. So since the mid, um, mid year mage reworks, Cassiopeia is no longer allowed to buy uh, boots. Uh, rest in peace, the meme. I think that's a bigger meme. Boots are just so valuable. I don't understand why Cassiopeia can't buy boots. Move speed as a passive it does not compensate for the efficiency of magic penetration. Cooldown. Like, Brutes of Lucidity, Cassiopeia would be like a must-have. Hmm. You want reduced flash cooldown. Still, six-item Cassiopeia sounds rather scary. Yes. To it, be honest. It does. And the move speed that you get, it scales up to into, into relevance, absolutely. So once you get to the three-item stage, maybe the four-item stage, it's always going to be quite dangerous. So just for context, it does scale up to upgraded tier 2 boots like Iron boots, like Merc Threads, not quite your Swifties or um, Mobility boots though. As we take a look at Snake's finished team composition, they're going to pick up Ezreal and Echo as their final two lock-ins. We're still waiting to see what LG are going to pick up as their final pick. It could be a top laner, a mid laner, or it's even a support. It should be a top laner. We'll see where they go with this one, of course. Snake's finished team composition, to me, it reveals that it's going to be the rise in that middle lane. That's not a surprise. And they know that it's an Echo that he's playing against top lane for Marin here as PYL is either trolling or they're seriously deliberating between those options. Well, let's see what they do lock in. It's going to be a Trundle. So it still has the potential to go to certain places, but it should be a top lane Trundle with a mid lane Cassiopeia and Karma is going to be relegated to the support position. No, no longer being played by Punished here. So another very interesting team comp coming up from LGD, running the Cassiopeia Ash. Yeah, the Cassiopeia. Team composition. I, like, so Ash has a lot of pick. 
with Karma as well. They can catch up to you quite nicely. Trundle's one of the better utility. I can split push or I can group up with you top laners that can force you into Ash Arrows and make you either burn summoners to avoid it or a movement spell. As far as the team composition goes from LGD, they're very pick focused and kite back. Like, if Snake run towards them with what is low range carries on their team, yep. LGD might be happy. Everybody on Snake's lineup quite low range here. They have to get up into your face to deal damage, especially the likes of a grazed jungle. Yeah, but Snake on the flip side, I will say, for a, a standard team composition, having a rise in it could just be a danger point. Punished is going to have to put in work in this matchup. Well, let's see if he can punish Tank in the mid lane as we head into, ch into game number two between Snake Esports and LGD Gaming. We've loaded on to Summoner's Rift for game number two between Snake Esports and LGD Gaming. We're going to see another interesting team composition coming to the Rift this time round. Red Side has had some interesting drafting phases at the moment, but LGD yep. rocking the Cassiopeia, which is less interesting, more counter, in, counter option. I did not have the word coming out of my mouth right just there. Cassiopeia has historically been picked in a rise. Ryze is a forward-facing, low-range champion that wants to combo all of his burst. So even by making him turn around, you're potentially interrupting all of that combo. As SOFM is about to find people. Finds Martin, uh, Marin. <laughs> I need to stop mixing up these two. Yes, one has a T. One doesn't. One's got a capital R. Yeah. Look, that's on you. Just, just get it right. I'll try. We just took a look at the Keystone Masteries there. Nothing... Uh, surprising Imp. No more Thunderlords coming out for him. Yes, and this time he's also <laughs> not playing Jin. He's on the Ash. So you would expect a standard Keystone Mastery as LGD are going to work their way out onto the Rift in a standard pattern, which means we will have standard lanes and Ash, one of the strengths. And this is why I say Imp in this situation. Very good 2v2 laner. And so is Karma for Poke. Just like that, no lane swaps coming out for these two teams. We're going to see standard lanes take to the rift this time round. We had an interesting uh, variation of lane swap taking place after Snake moved their AD carry and support to the top side of the map last game. Yeah. One thing Snake are always good at doing as well is actually making map movements, setting up their vision as Martin. There we go. That's the way. Jeez, he took most of his health. <laughs> Thankfully, he has a relic shield. So we are going to see Amy start on the top side of the map. This is Welcome aggressive SOFM. Finds Amy inside of the jungle, forces him off. Amy is still level one here. Graves is level two. Took Gromp straight into red buff. This is something out of a solo queue cheese coming out from SOFM. He's a very innovative jungler. Ooh. He knows how to play to the enemy junglers. It's <laughs> risky, but there's always high reward. So yeah, completely pushed out. Amy's response, though, should be to get level two as quick as possible and go to the enemy red buff. So we'll see how SOFM plays it out instead. Is this going to be a bit of cross-map jungling now with influences in different areas? It's been quite some time since I've seen a Gromp to enemy red start from any jungler. You know what I like about this game, though, when we look at LGD's drafting? Is the mentality that will play towards these teams, knowing that Karma was mid in game number one uh -huh. and is now support. The expectation when you see a Karma now, <laughs> because she was mid, is that it will hurt you. And so they may actually show a lot more respect to Karma without actually processing the difference. And as we are highlighting the fact that Amy just rushed level two and went to the enemy red buff, which That's was smart. expected. But it was clever, yes. As a matter of efficiency, it was clever. I really like the start coming out from Amy. You can see SMM already had to go back to base. Picked up a long sword and long sword for his troubles. Amy catched up on CS, got the red buff away. And it's, quite frankly, doing fine down the jungle after a very early aggressive invade from SOFM. It'll ultimately be an even jungle between both of these two, and Graves being a farm-heavy jungler just tried something a little bit cute. And he at least got awareness of where the Elise is. Yep. 
And as good junglers would know, the Elisa's immediate movement is to go to the enemy red buff. Once again, proactive from Amy, which is something we didn't expect coming into this game, which is good to see. Signs He's of life. He's always been a proactive jungler, uh -huh. just not a ganker. It's just very rarely been seen in lanes, and because Myron just gets consistently camped, that's been the biggest problem that LGD have always had. Well, let's see what he can do, because he's now on Elise, a jungle that is uh, more well-known for ganking. As SOM is going to continue with his hunt for Raptors and Krugs. Now actually going to find Punish in the mid lane. Slows him down with the red buff, but that's all he gets. Moves he's straight back for those Raptors. Raptors. <laughs> Moves straight back for them. He 100% had those Raptors timed. He does it every game. He... <laughs> he hates them. That's, that's the only explanation I had. He doesn't like Krugs or Raptors on the opposite side of the map. He's also making his position actually quite vulnerable and very well telegraphed, however, to LGD. So mm -hmm. their response could be fight, could be flight. But either way, they'll have knowledge. So Myron has to respect and will not die for it, at least, which is nice for Myron. It also feels like SFM, by doing this, kind of forces Amy to play to the bottom side of the map. Doesn't force it. Mm -hmm. But because Amy wants to continue to farm, instead of ganking, yes, it, it indirectly does. And Amy being Elise, still not looking for ganks, actually just wanting to farm. SOFM is able to farm up quite nicely here. It's about five CS ahead of Amy for now. Gone back to base for the second time already. Picked up his skirmishing blade as a jungle item. Yeah, so Cassiopeia with the new changes. Mm -hmm. Doesn't do a whole lot into a rise with the W. It doesn't actually stop any movement because you don't have any. There aren't a lot of champions on the side of Snake that it will directly impact. There's Myron and Flandre. Ooh, that's a Ooh. lot of damage. Flashes forward, tries to get that final bite. Can't find it. Both flashes burn up in the top side of the map. Immediate back coming out from Myron to try and capitalize on the huge creep wave he has. Yeah, simultaneous flashes to be fair from them, so... They do well. Flandre in particular does well to reactively flash, knowing that Myron will follow it. Myron's got a really big creep wave here building up. Flandre just trying to find whatever minions he can to farm up before heading back to base, it seems. Doran's blade start coming up from Myron here on the trundle as well. Yeah, he'll probably go for the Ravenous Hydra Spirit Visage build also and continue to split pushes. Amy is, I'm going to say, predictably monitoring his Raptors this time around. Just loses the small ones. Is able to smite away the large raptor. Gets the raptor sense for it. And Zamara now up in the top lane. Out of mana. Can't dual Flandre as effectively. But still, I think this is the point of contention. And the camera does keep coming back towards this. But at any moment, the Cassiopeia could look to fight Tank. But Tank is also on the champion that has a 7 out of 9 games played win rate. Yep. Amy looking for a gank up top. Flandre... Has to be a little bit careful. The spider is going to come out. He's got no flash here. Cocoon still available. Misses the cocoon there. Not able to lock down the echo. The game of chicken pays off for Flandre. He didn't have a lot of wall to walk towards any further. So did have to try and make a guess. Pays off. Myron, of course, can't follow up. But Amy's finally showed his face on the map. And at the first time that he does, he's still behind 12 CS. Snake now looking to try and jump on top of Imp here. SFM is down on the bottom side of the map. Here is Janu. He's trying to jump Whoa. on top of them. Jay-Z. Jay-Z, sorry. Trying to jump on top of them. If he actually just auto-attacked and like flash autoed, he would have died. Imp would have died. Hmm. Jay-Z flash queued. Which is rule number one. You either Q or you flash auto. It's unusual stuff here from Snake's support. Uh, past two days, we've seen a lot of Literally the difference between a kill or not. Unfortunately. A lot of Brahms do that over the past few days. What he wanted to do, I think, and the reason that we see it happen occasionally is you want to Q and then flash auto at the same time. It's Punish and Tank going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Both cleanses being used. Amy flashing forward for that cocoon. Doesn't find it. Yeah. And tank actually wins that trade effectively because Punish has used his ultimate. Mm -hmm. Punish didn't use cleanse. And of course, Tank uses his own to try and continue the trade and then walk away. I still think that favors Tank as he can continue to trade here and be aggressive knowing that Punish can't fight him anymore. Both mid laners took cleanse into this matchup, like you mentioned. Punish still holding on to his. And the Miasma does come out from Cassiopeia. Like you mentioned, no movement restrictions will come out of tank. As there's a room for him one more time. Punish, Optic not to use the cleanse. Flashes afterwards, her first blood goes over to Snake. Yeah, I said it favored Ryze. I didn't mean that Punish should actually find an opportunity to go down in a situation like that. Ryze's ultimate cooldown is far too low for this lane matchup, and the Cassiopeia cheese 
I'm calling a cheese because Cassiopeia is just not played anymore. Punish As, opted yeah. not to use the cleanse the first engagement when he uses ultimate. Opted not to use it again after being locked down. Instead, uses the flash. I think that was a very poor play coming out from Punish, to be honest. Poor individual play. The end result, though, is Tank being Rise. No surprises. Actually gets the kill. Strong champion. LGD, though. For the first time in what feels like forever, have a top laner that isn't being camped. Maybe this is the saving grace that they've needed after all. <laughs> Marin's been able to run free, it seems, on some of this rift from now. Running free on Trundle. He's got his TM up picked up, so probably going to look towards that Ravenous Hydra next, as SFM's doing a little bit of counter drungling of his own here. Trying to take blue buff away from Amy. He's been monitoring his camps. Skirmish to save actually might be used on top of Amy there. Interesting. There's Cassiopeia and PYL trying to chase down SFM. Air Dragon joins the fight as well. <laughs> yeah, I see what PYL was doing there, just putting a bit of damage down. But most importantly, pushing them off the blue buff. If Tank joins the fight, then things may start to go a bit awry on the side of LGD. But SOFM is not done. He's that's also a, on a pink ward. It's a pink ward. So there we it. go. It's actually going to get a tag to buy that Miasma. Lots of damage coming out from Punish. Uses the Q and the Quick Draw to get away. So Cassiopeia is still very dangerous in terms of damage dealt. Yeah, remember when poisoned now with the new Cassiopeia, they take bonus magic damage. The cooldown of the E is permanently low. The yep. damage is only there if they are poisoned. So good to see that movement from Punished. Curious as to what he's maxing because that was doing an awful lot. Let's see what he is. There's a toss-up between um, the E and the Q max yeah, from of lots of Cassiopeias. Traditionally, it was always the Q. And you would assume it's Q again simply because the E is low cooldown. Mm. It's a consistent source of damage, whether it's high or not. There's and it's the Q. No, it's E. No, it's E. Yeah, it's four ranks. Yeah. So there Punish opting for more... And so, yeah, so the cool thing about that is, like, increased magic damage means that you can build resistances and tier as your first items. Okay. And still do a lot of bonus damage. Well, Cassiope does have to scale, and they can't buy boots anymore, so has to rely on her passive for movement speed. Mm hmm I don't mind it. Honestly, and maxing Twin Fangs is very much a style choice. Mm -hmm. I can see the merit in it. As he missed those, and I think it was on purpose. Amy's been uh, farming up a lot more in this game, but to be fair, SFM has been doing the same thing on this Graves. Arguably much better for SFM. Though as Flandre actually trying to go toe to toe against Amara and just pops down the subjugate immediately. The pillar's going to come to stop him. Locks down by the power lock convergence. And Trundle will win that trade for now. <laughs> Flandre thought he caught him napping. He wasn't napping. He was trying to just recall. And so now the problem is. He has to stay for an extra wave and has no mana, but Flandre is being predictably aggressive mm -hmm. in this situation. Amy could find a way in. Here he comes. Amy going to jump on top of him. Flandre actually forced to flash away. Power Converge is not going to land. Cocoon missing one more time from Amy. Really struggling on this yep. Elise right now. Just cannot get it done. He's being proactive in Needs certain to areas. calibrate. He just needs to hit that one ability. It's still a fairly even game between these two teams. Snake are slightly ahead in terms of gold due to the one kill they got in the mid lane earlier, tank taking on Punish one-on-one. -on -one. And about the 40 CS that we've seen between those two as well. It's a huge deficit that uh, tank has created in his advantage. Bottom lane, though, is going in Imp's favor right now. It's PYL. They want PYL. He's going to get caught out here. Really quick flash coming out from the Karma there. Quick fingers of PYL avoids the Braum ultimate. Good flash and good direction to flash. So. Yep. Very well executed from PYL. SFM and crew are now looking Imp for a dive bottom lane. Don't go there. No, they want PYL, not Imp. PYL going to try and speed up. Gets taken down immediately. Teleport actually coming in for the LGD lineup. Imp trying to do as much damage as possible. But now, Snake, they've got lots of members okay, down the bottom so side of the map. No minions, but five people strong. Imp's only response right now is to clear minions and run the heck away well, as long as he can. Got an arrow down. He's trying to just farm whatever he minions. can. He's getting as much farm as possible. Imp now getting caught and tank comes down. Finds that kill. That's a 3 nil snake. And two minions. So 40 gold in his back pocket. Of course, he cleared away beforehand. Ideally, he's just trying to slow them down now. Gives some time, perhaps in the middle lane, but mostly in the top lane for Myron. And that does feel like LGD's strategy at the moment is 
put the trundle on the pedestal. He's finally got an opportunity to carry by himself here, Myron. Big saving grace for LGD as well as the fact that it's a Cloud Dragon that has started us off in the rift for game number two. We'll be the first dragon to fall for Snake as well. Hopefully we'll be able to tab up to the top lane and see what Marit is doing to this turret. As Amy gets a little bit of counter jungling for himself. Yeah, staying to his strong side, which mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense. So these turrets should trade one for one as PYL is trying to lock down Jay-Z. They do trade turrets, which means that Snake are about a thousand gold ahead of LGD. So LGD doing a good job of mitig mitig I can't mitigating. mitigating the damage. Can't do words. It's a good lead, but it's not too strenuous of a situation for LGD. It's still on to a riot, so that's a huge power pick for yeah, the Snake lineup no. right now. Especially with the cleanse. A lot of ways that LGD are going to be able to lock him down. Not looking I good. Mean, Rek'Sai banned, but uh, LGD ran. I can't speak now. Thank you. You've actually, like, it's contagious. Well done, Fish. What is wrong with you? They banned Bard, Siva, Rek'Sai. They had an opportunity with two targeted bands to go for the rise instead. Yep. They didn't. They opted into this rise, knowing, of course, blue side snake. They could first pick that if they wanted. Tanks. Unusual decision. Tanks be doing well. He took the kill on Imp earlier and was able to get a solo kill into Punished. I think that cleanse is really helping him out. Let's see how that works in the later team fights that we'll see between these two teams. Yeah, and we're seeing no teleports in the middle lane. Yep. It is a reactive cleanse choice from Tank so that he can 1v1 and it pays off because he's huge, but there's no 1-3-1 real viability from the rise if Myron gets big enough. A snake now, they're going to send their AD carrying support up to the top lane. Martin and Jay-Z are going to match up against Imp here. So Marin and Flandre move down towards the bottom side of the map. Yeah, they meet them. They match. Uh, this is actually, as far as lane assignments go, better for LGD, though. Okay. Because they can continue to push the bottom lane with Trundle in the 1v1. Tank once again. Throws down his ultimate, being a little bit threatening. Just clears out the minion wave. That's all Punish needs to do. Just sit back. Try not to die. Have a great time on Summoner's Rift. Tank going to take blue buff away as well. SLFM giving it over towards the Rise. Hugely beneficial for... The mana intensive champion as Marin is just walking all over Flandre right now. It's lots of damage down, but that's a five man squad of Snake trying to roam on towards this Trundle. Power Conversion is coming down. Gonna get locked down by it, as well as the ultimate coming in. From oh, the got him. But that's a big ultimate coming out from Punish as they try to lock down Flandre living with about 10 health. Amy has to try and flash away on top of that. LGD get a good team fight in response. As some of the spells are burnt across the board. No, Punish completely out of mana actually thwarted any further advances Ooh. that LGD had. Otherwise, they could have found kills there, but they don't. And the end result is that a lot was used, but nothing was actually gained for these teams. In fact, LGD are slowly catching up in terms of gold here against Snake. The only huge difference that separates these two teams now is the single Cloud Dragon that Snake have at the moment. It's gone down to about 500 gold only in Stake's favor. Yeah, still, there's not a big difference between these teams. And yep. again, farm value for the top laners, farm value for the AD carries. Middle lane's just trying to be diffused by Punish. And for what it's worth, that was meant to be a lane that he does well in. At least does well later. Looking at Draft, the Snake does have a place. Mm -hmm. Albeit a small one. As speaking of place... That is very aggressive coming from Jay-Z on top of him. There forces the flash and a teleport... That does eventually get cancelled. They're coming out from Marin. Now looking to try and see if they can find a dive. SOFM is in very deep there. PYL takes a lot of damage, but now they're trying to dive the turret. A lot of LGD members are up here. Punish does get locked down. Force to use the cleanse. He's able to take down Jay-Z, but Tank is just walking all over the Cassiopeia. Force to use the stasis. Actually, not a stasis coming out from him. So he just randomly turned gold there, but the rest of LG just getting cleaned up underneath this turret. A double kill comes in for Martin, and there's nothing that Amy could do. No, Snake just get completely walked over. Oh, sorry, Snake completely walk over LGD. The idea from Marin by cancelling his teleport actually causes a lot of problems. Yep. And yes, never mind, that, that happens. But yes, it works out in the bottom lane. They get themselves a turret. Marin is still the major win condition. We'll see how he plays this one out. This could be a kill. He's trying to take down Flandre here. The pillar not going to slow Flandre down enough. He actually goes back in for more. He's looking to try and fight this struggle really, there. Power Locker Virgin is going to go down, give him a little bit of a shield. Marin, not afraid to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against this Echo, and I don't blame him. Yeah, no, Marin definitely still had the upper hand in that situation. 
And as always, the aggressor went ahead. Myron definitely pushing his luck this time around. Ooh. The rest of LGD are the problem point. Yep. Everybody's suffering except the Trundle. And that was because the teleport was cancelled. It's bad news. Be across the rest of the LGD map. What they did well in game one has just been undone slightly in this game. They're still mitigating the damage dealt by the Snake lineup. But they're not being proactive in creating their own opportunities. But they're also just a big item spikes on the side of Snake. So they were happy to bridge that gap and play it cool, calm, and collected. Ryze has two items. Ezreal has two items. The Echo probably not going to die as often anymore, given what he has in his back pocket as well. Even SOFM's getting to a point of power. Like, yeah, LGD, they slowed the game down. They found themselves closer and closer with gold values. But right now, in relative strength, I'm looking at Snake and saying they are just super far ahead. We're approaching the 20-minute mark in the game. Dragon and Baron are going to spawn at the same time here, so two major objectives will go back up on the map. Snake seem like they have control over Summoner's Rift. We'll have to see if they're able to control the pits as well. Still have a 2,500 gold lead mark for themselves. Yeah, definitely doing well. Snake, between game one and two, have showed slight improvements. Mostly in the way they're playing. Oh, they're just cheating. Hello, this is interesting. So Snake, I think, are aware of this. Cassiopeia does it quickly. Trundle does it quickly. Pink what is there, just though. Flandre. They still want this. Punish is going to try and stop Flandre from jumping in the pit. Marin, Mar Marin turns around, puts down the subjugate. That one pink ward that was not checked by LGD. Thoughts there, Baron plans? Yeah, they clear the ward. And still, Snake respond. They can just go straight back to the Mountain Drake again. And they too. There's no way that the Baron can be looked at from LG. That was a very early little eye in at an opportunity that did not go as anticipated. This mid lane turret under siege as well from the Snake lineup. Mountain Dragon is going to fall. Snake picked this one up. And it's going to be another Mountain Dragon that spawns here in the next six minutes. I like the idea though from LGD. The cheeky Baron. Yeah, you know, sometimes you have to just make plays like that, and occasionally they work. The one well, time they do, the game could have completely changed because it's a split-pushing trundle. Well, they did back off, so it was a very low-risk play that, if worked out, would have been really high reward. Punished wasn't there quick enough either, so they didn't get it to a low enough health value to look even to finish it. Speaking of Punish, he has his Saras and Braze completed as we take a look at the gold differences here. 2,000 gold tank is above Punish right now. A massive lead for him. In the bottom lane, it's a thousand gold in favor of Martin. It's mm -hmm. a thousand gold in favor of Myron on LGD side of the map. The carries are big on Snake, but the yep. top laner is big on LGD. And the only concern that you would have as an LGD fan at this point is that they're not going to be looking towards the split push. LGD only has Myron, and he's not going to be in team fights. So if Snake get a pick, things could go horribly for LGD. Certainly could. SOFM is actually waiting very deep inside of LGD's jungle. Does get spotted out by the blue trinket. Has a pink ward to spot out any other wards in that brush. Only being very diligent and face checking using the spider links. Yeah, so Snake are pushing advantages, finding themselves slowly but assuredly further ahead. Working around the strengths of their mid laner, the strengths of their AD carry, Martin on that Ezreal something that he does treasure quite dearly. Martin has two major items in a recurve bow. Imp is still sitting on that Essence Reaver and the components of a zeal, not even the zeal item. Struggle treat for this Ash right now. We're just waiting for an Ash arrow as well. Yep. Very rarely finding these opportunities to get in and get a pick at all, and that's what LGD definitely want to have. But still yet to be seen. And I guess they can... Consider that a safe decision, knowing that sooner or later Myron will become quite overwhelming in a 1v1. But how long and what will they lose between now and then? Because that's their big win condition, is hold the fort, win the 1v1. For now, it's a 3,000 gold deficit between Snake and LGD, 7 to 1 in terms of kills. And holding the fort makes sense if you're LGD. For now, because the longer this game go uh, goes, the less that 3k gold advantage means. At two items per, eight per carry, the simplest components could mean the difference between a won and lost team fight. Yeah, and one big thing as well is that the vision has been 
withheld from LGD by a fair bit. They're actually controlling Snake's movements and trying to match vision control. Something that Snake are always very good at is placing wards, setting themselves up nicely. You can see that they're doing that again now on the top side of the map. But every time they do it, LGD's trying to answer. So FM. Yeah, they're still... This is like the first big important step that Snake will always try and execute on. <laughs> that was uh, decisive from SOFM. He wanted those Raptors. Graves can afford to do that. Fair bit of cooldown reduction in his back pocket. Mm -hmm. Not in items just yet though. And this tank now getting jumped on by Martin here. Oh, Marin, sorry. Immediately regrets the decision as the Trundle takes a lot of damage. Pops down to subjugate rather early. Jay-Z takes a lot of damage in return. Yeah, Braum easier to kill. Remember, that is a finished Guardian Angel for Tank right now on that rise. Nice. <laughs> Aptly named is the mid laner for Snake because he's probably not going to die anytime soon. I still think giving over the rise here, a very poor decision from the LGD lineup. I think we've established that. Oh. It's, it's a disaster. With an over 80% ban They rate. just spot the Arcane Shift coming out from Ezreal there. That arrow is still going to connect onto the tank. Forces the cleanse from the rise. The flash as well. So two major summoner spells burnt on tank. Yeah, still quite clever to have that cleanse in the first place. Yep. LGD can rinse and repeat that strategy. Myron with no ultimate though means that he's not a tank. He's going to have a little bit worse time in that side lane. The snake can now afford to be the aggressors, knowing the big cooldowns have been burnt. It's a little bit quieter between snake and LGD now. Contrast in games one and two, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was more kills than there was time on the clock in game it's number a, one. It was a bloodbath, game one. This is a farm fiesta. Yeah, they've slowed it down. It's a and that favors Snake. It's a Minotaur Dragon spawn. It's going to be another Mountain Dragon that comes up. Snake are going to be able to take down this mid lane outer turret, increasing their gold advantage to 4,000. So slowly creeping ahead of LGD. And it feels like LGD, at least for the first time in a while whilst losing the game, have got a win condition that they can try and play towards at the very least. Win condition? Yeah, Marin. <laughs> Whereas, like, right now there's a 60 CS difference between mid laners. Yep. Imp's just a mid laner. They've got an arrow to tank though. Let's hold that thought for now because tank has no summoner spells to get out of this. That Guardian Angel is going to go down. He's able to obliterate PYL before he goes down though. So it's a 4 and 5 for now. Jay Z falls down. Here comes the Guardian Angel to tank. Gets back up. Marin is smacking him with that club. Trying to take it down. One more bite takes it down. Now he has to go one on one against Martin and Flandre. It's a double kill for now. He Marin. takes down the Ezreal. Marin really is this weak condition as he finds a triple kill. Looking for Flandre as well. He does a clears. He clobbers away at this echo. That was a huge team fight for LGD. And the only reason that that team fight was huge <laughs> is because Trundle exists on Summoner's Rift. They catch out Tank and you're right, he had no Summoner spells, no cleanse, no flash, and he just outright gets CC locked. PYL going down is all of Snake's focus. Input in good damage here and survive for long enough and as does Punished, but they still put in work. And because they're focusing on Punished and Imp, and even individually they are, Myron just walks up to everybody and just hits him with his club. He seriously just sits in the back line, completely unattended towards, and kills them all. Well, they're certainly executing on their win condition here, LGD. They've actually brought the goal back to 2,000. They've halved the deficit that Snake put them in. There's another Mountain Drake up, though. Snake having one of those. Might want another. I still think that when Summoner spells are back up, that was honestly just Snake playing foolishly around their lack of cooldowns on Summoners for tank. SFM has been spotted out here. Hawkshot going to show that he started on this Mountain Dragon. LGD Ash has arrow. not to go in. Yeah. So they're going to give away the Mountain Dragon. There's no. going to be another Cloud Dragon that comes up here. Now Marin has Teleport. He has Flash still. And he has his ultimate backup. Three big items completed for the Trundle. Yep. He is... Monstrous. He's a tank. He does a lot of damage with that Ravenous Hydra. Especially when the Frozen Domain is put down underneath everybody else. Tank is still a force to be reckoned with even without his Guardian Angel. With the cleanse back up, he can get rid of the Ash Arrow and stop the repeat initiation coming in from LGD. Yeah, thankfully LGD can back up that crowd control with more crowd control and cause Tank to not be able to cleanse everything. So it's very particular with what he has to use it on. LGD still not out of this game by any stretch. 
Down a lot of drakes, though. They've got all, all their eggs in the Marin basket as well, though, which is a little bit scary, seeing how the gold is distributed on snakes line up quite evenly. The carries are big. Flandre is decently sized. SLFM doing well. He's got a rapid-fire cannon. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Yep. SLFM. It's not too bad, Rapid Fire Cannon. A bit of extra range. I don't blame him, given how low range their team composition is. And we already spoke to the strength of Cassiopeia being ultimate into low range carries. Mm -hmm. More often than not, you'll find it'll at least do damage and apply the slow, if not the stun. You see Cassiopeia has picked up three major items there. Saris Embrace, Morello, Nomicon, and the Abyssal Scepter. Doesn't have to spend money to pick up boots because it's banned on the snake. Yeah, but that move speed will be scaling up decently well by the level 15 mark. Actually be quite happy with your current position if you were punished. As LGD, realistically you would think, just want a posture to defend the Baron, but Myron is showing that he's got some proactivity still available to him. Actually wants the enemy red buff before he tries split pushing. <laughs> Should be able to take this one down. Tank and Jay-Z making their way towards that. See if he they walked fight over for a ward. He's, yep, on top of that, doesn't decide he cares. Now gets it. Now cares. He wants them to see what he's doing to their base, or to their jungle, <laughs> sorry. You see this red buff? This is just. my red buff. <laughs> Close to the clock as well. Like this, I, honestly, like we keep harping on about it, but it's the only thing that LGD have going for them right now. That trundle is ridiculous. And they have a facilitative bottom lane. It's a Karma Ash. They're not meant to be the hyper carry team with Illusion anymore. Ash just needs to hit that arrow. And we'll still be doing a lot of late game damage, but it's a cooldown reduction build. Yep. For the purpose of more arrows. Let's see how Imp can use that. Does have the Hurricane built up here. Looking for his next major BS sword item. Does have the Quicksilver Sash already picked up as well, so we'll be able to get out of some of the crowd control that will be present on Snake's lineup. Yeah, and punished about 10 CDR off the cap also. The Zonias would be able to round him out nicely, but might want to Rylize first. Again, looking for utility, looking for tanky AP routes. He does have Actually, the option. Need to stuff. He does have the option of going for a sixth item instead of boots on the Cassiopeia as the later this game goes. So late game kind of favors LGD in that sense, but they snakes still have a rise. That's like 55, <laughs> maybe minutes. That's pretty far down the pipeline. <laughs> Well, the way LGD been playing reminds me of Team WE right now. They're just hugging, hunkering down in it's their base. It's just like so the few bunker. options for them, though. Amy's down so far. Mm -hmm. He only has components in comparison to big items. Is they might be looking. Teleport's actually coming in. Mara, he's on top of tank here, trying to duke it out with him. The Trundle's so capable of damage. It's Fandre. He's getting it melted down. Force use the he's ultimate gone. very early there. He's bottom. He's gone back down to the bottom lane, so... Disengaging quite nicely. Use his teleport there. Ah, uh, he didn't mean to run that far away, but he took so much damage from Imp. It worked. It would work for LGD. It didn't work for for Flandre. They can now pressure. Look towards perhaps the Baron. Think about how quickly they'll take this one down. Still, Cassiopeia, Trundle, Ash, pretty good. At least as well, percent base Flandre's damage. back. They actually might get a pick onto Imp here. They are able to get a slow down. Martin going aggressively forward with that Arcane Shift to slow down Imp even more. He's taking a little bit of damage, even more being dished out by SFM. They're just trying to poke out LGD for now. Marin disengage. doesn't have his subjugate up just yet. The battle is for the inside track of the middle lane that Snake have got. So keep the jungle control, push the mid lane turret, force LGD to walk the long way. This should mean more gold in the back pocket for Snake with a cheeky little rotation here. And they are going to walk that long way back into the lane. Arrow actually coming out from Imp. They're going to land on top of Flandre. Gets locked down on top of the Miasma there. He's going to get locked down even further. So that's a good ultimate from Punish. Locks down Martin. Takes a lot of damage. Flandre forces his ultimate to come back. But Jay-Z's already taken down. LGD get two picks in that team And Myron's not done. He just flashed over the wall. He's looking for it. He's slowing down Martin. Going one on one against the Ezra one more time. He's going to have to arc okay, shift. Doesn't oh, get no. up the wall. Martin, he's able to take. He's going to take a tail by Marin there. LGD get three picks. They've got their eyes set on the Baron buff. Martin misses the execution twice with the flash and the E. That just means that LGD on the back of big picks. You can see the credit that's due for Punish picking Cassiopeia. Marin is going off right now, zoning them all away. And the rise did nothing in that last fight. Tank couldn't get anywhere close to the carries of LGD. 
That was really good play coming up from LGD. That was insane. And they lost the turret for it, LGD, but the reactive play still there. Cooldown reduction from the Ash, giving arrows left, right, and center, is helping out a lot for this team. 5 0 2 is the Trundle, and he is still most of their team, but with finished items getting into the back pockets of Imp and punished. They're getting a semblance of full-on team fighting. This also means that LGD break even in terms of gold with Snake right now and make their way towards the Dragon Pit to take down the final Cloud Dragon of the game, the final Elemental Dragon as well. This is sneaky from Snake. So though. Marin doesn't have Teleport, and whilst yep. he has the Baron buff, if he chooses a side lane, he has most of their strength out the window. Imp is going to be trying to clue out this wave here. Well, this they don't have an Ash Arrow, so if Imp stays here... This is sneaky. So look at where the vision for LGD actually lies, and it ends where Imp is right now. There is no reason for him to push past that point because it's a risk. Mm -hmm. Snake actually standing there, they're expecting an overextension from Imp, which he is notorious for doing. Yep. But he doesn't because they're actually winning this game. They're not like in a position where they're losing and deciding they just should continue to fight, play Vayne, split push. He's on Ash. He has reservations. That's amazing, I know. Gives us some time to take stock of the items that have been picked up here. Marin on his trundle. He's now level 18. Got that Guardian Angel, Frozen Heart, Spirit Precision. The Ravenous Hydra looking towards a Randuin's Omen as his final item. That's a very big tank. It is a big tank. Flandre on the upper side does have five completed items. Still sitting on the Corrupting Potion, though. And they're going to break this turret as well. No one responding. From Snake, keeping in mind Ryze does not have a teleport, which is something we're used oh. to seeing. Myron is also just able to 1v3 zone people. Snake's best bet, 5v5. Get and engage. Work as a team fight. Paolo converges, actually coming down from Flandre. Doesn't decide to hop in. Rest of LGD make their way down towards the bottom side of the map. Good speed up coming up from PYL. And they can poke this constantly. Imp with the W on Ash. Punished with his poison that he can throw down everywhere and actually zone away movement spells means that Flandre's engage, Martin's disengage. If they time all, even SOFM's disengage just doesn't actually exist. As it stops all movement spells, even Callista's auto attack jumps don't exist. Well, you can see Mara is actually split pushing the mid lane. It's a very deep parallel convergence does come out from Flandre. They're still trying to chip away at this turret. They do have the siege minions doing some work. Marin actually just doesn't care about tank right now. Looking to try and take down this mid lane inner turret. Rise almost gets clipped there by the arrow. Backs off and away. Actually got some good damage down to Mara, but look how fast yeah, the trundle just heals it up. Gets like 200 health back per hit. Whew. So really, tank does do damage, and that's the saving grace. And this is why I say their best answer is actually to get a 5v5. They can force a team fight. They can kill Marin. The tables have turned, though. It's a 4,000 gold lead for LGD right now. We're getting closer and closer to the late game. It just makes me happy to see them not camping Marin. <laughs> the game's result doesn't matter as much to me as the fact that Marin didn't wasn't get camped. camped. He must not. He must be confused. Like, oh, I, this is not meant to happen. <laughs> Since when do champions have so he'll much power? He'll get into his next game and he'll be like, "Why am I being camped again? <laughs> My power is gone. I was so strong." That's right, everyone gets one. Remember me. Witness me. Still unbelievably strong. And with a 2k gold difference, it's most of the gold lies with him. Well, he's at six items now. And Punish having that void stuff, he has had it for a little while. Means that he can pierce the magic resistance of Snake's tanks. He's got his needlessly large rod as well, which means once he completes that fifth item, he'll be going over the threshold of what we see normal carries pick up in the mid lane. And it might be the Rylize, it might be the Void Staff. Depends on how confident he's feeling. Amy does already have a Rylize, and Ash has slows everywhere. Could be the Zonias as well, from the Cassiopeia. Yeah, he might want to cap out his cooldown reduction. We'll see. He's about to buy something. No, he's not. He placed a ward. <laughs> I saw an item slot leave, and I was like, oh, he's in base. He's not in base. <laughs> I'm looking at the minimap. Good job, me. Zip now trying to get some good damage down on towards this turret. True Shot Barrage comes out to clip out the wave and also stop the advances from LGD. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Marin is still doing Marin things and just duking it out with Flandre. But Flandre can control the minions, yep. which means it's not exactly feasible without the Baron buff. 
to have this lane assignment without a teleport in. Interesting fact about Marin's build is he has no Sunfire Cave, so he can't just proc damage from the turret if he goes up just to try and clip it away. Mm -hmm. And right now, the teleport from Flandre indicates that they want a TP flank, and that's what that ward from SOFM is for. <laughs> Watch the way that LGD now play around this. All of them are hugging. Oh. And that's what I mean. He just doesn't take damage from this tower. Flandre has to deal with the minions and just can't do enough damage to Marin. They take down an inhibitor turret down at the bottom lane. And he just doesn't care. He's onto this inhibitor. Flandre tickles this troll. Deep down, I just hope Marin starts laughing in this situation. <laughs> Because right now it is laughable. Flandre is trying so hard. They started a fight though. SFM gets, does get clipped by that arrow. Imp taking a lot of damage. Does get locked down. Able to flash away. Stays alive. Amy is going to be the dead. first one to fall down. SOFM, the crew, are chasing them down. Good collateral damage. They're able to finish them off. As Punisher Nip trying to run for their lives. Inhibitor still does fall. <laughs> so Marin split pushing successfully against Flandre. And we spoke to the win conditions of LGD. Snake won a team fight and LGD won a Marin. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. <laughs> that's exactly what they get. They're basking in the glory of this trundle giving them free inhibitors. And you know what? Two people dying for inhibitor? Pretty much worth it every single time. There's no Elder Drake. There's no Baron yet. They'll all be up for it. But that's a big thing as well. Baron will be coming up in 40 seconds. And that's the Baron inhibitor down on the bottom lane taken by LGD. Gives them lots of control if they go for this pit. Yeah, meaning the furthest away, Flandre and have to teleport for it. Yep. Only one teleport on their team as well means the pressure is there. But... The way Snake are currently assigning their lanes looks like they want the Elder Dragon. So Punish to pick up a Rylos Crystal Scepter on this Cassiopeia. So it's capped out at five major items. We'll look for these six very shortly, but Snake, they're looking to try and take down this Elder Dragon rather quickly. LGD, they're going to be able to collapse on this one. Parallel Convergence actually going down. PYL is grouped up with the team, still waiting on Amy. No, so no smite for the LGD lineup. They're going to try and fight Snake, though. Jay-Z takes so much damage. SOFM, he's got the Elder Dragon. That's a three augmented dragon buff coming out. Marin, he's going huge he's still here. Alive. He's still alive. He's not getting taken down. Martin trying to do what he can, but that's such a huge troll. And LGD find four kills there. Only SOFM left alive. Nobody taken down on LGD's lineup. And Snake, welcome to the Trundle passive. The man does not die. SOFM, the saving grace. Oh, he is able to one-shot Imp there. He's going to go against the rest of the crew. Amy oh tries to go up the air. He's trying to go up against PYL, but the rest of the crew comes out. Valiant effort to pick up a double kill, but that's an ace coming in for LGD. Instead of five people, there's now three, and Imp is missing. It does look like they'll have enough time to at least hit one of the turrets. Five seconds on Jay-Z. They have enough time for at least one. Five on Jay-Z. Minions are here, so these will now die quicker. There's no longer backdooring in effect. 14 on Flandre. It's very possible that LG could just end the game here. Jay-Z going to do what he can. Does have the ultimate to try and slow them down even longer. Six seconds for Flandre to come High back alive. But here it. goes the turret. The turret's gone. Nexus is being worked on by LGD. They're able to pick up another win here back to back as they take down Snake in their first game of cross-conference. LGD. Woo! We said don't sleep on them. They're a team <laughs> that on their worst days are the worst team in their group, but on their best days could kick it with the best. And Snake, second in their own group. They go down to LGD, who are one and four. Now two and four. It's just deja vu one more time here. The first, or one of the first things that Spawn told me when I came to this country is LGD. They're always going to be one win away from getting back into playoff contention. LGD are like a box <laughs> of chocolates. You no. never know which one you're going to get. Thank you, Forrest Gump. <laughs> Seriously, like, <laughs> LGT, they're the most confusing team in LPL history. And a well-deserving bow for them. Actually demolishing Snake in a 2-0. Oh, great game one from LGD. They fixed a lot of the flaws that we criticized them about time and